In this video, we're going to be looking at the Fluke Volt Alert 1AC version 2. Yes, today we're going to look at the Fluke Volt Alert 1AC A version 2. It's so simple, it's unbelievable. It's a perfect tool to have in your uh, tool bag, just another arsenal that you could just reach in your bag, pull it out, and uh, use this thing. If you're an electrician, you already know something like this. Uh, pretty handy. Somebody says, yeah, the breaker's off. You want to make sure that it's off before you touch anything. And this right here will do the job. It has a range of 90 to 1000 volt AC. And of course, it, uh, I've seen it work on DC as well, but I wouldn't depend on that to be accurate. It's, it's accurate at 90 to 1000 volt AC. So we'll just, we'll just leave it at that, okay? All right, some instructions. There's uh, about three modes on here. Uh, of course, if you just push it, it comes on, it beeps, and yeah, you can check uh, voltage that way. If you don't want it to beep, hold down on it, and then it, it goes off. Turn it back on, hold it down for a couple of seconds. One, two, let go. Now when you check voltage, it comes on, it's showing, yeah, that's, that's hot, but it doesn't beep, it doesn't do anything out loud. And the reason for that is you might be using this in a library, a classroom, a hospital, places that uh, you need to be as quiet as possible, okay, when you're working on something like that. I like the beeping because I like to, I like to know that it's working, so just press it, let it come on, you know, you know it's working. Now, what I have found with uh, these here, they work excellent on electrical as far as in the panel or a plug socket switches, anything like that. We'll show you some of that here in just a little bit. But uh, what I like about it is if you've got a, a power cord, let's just say you have something that's in, you know, a, a, a rack or something like that. And it's like the equipment's not working and you want to make sure that you got power going to it. A quick test, you know, if you got this in your bag laying right next to you, you know, you could just go right up to it and there you go. You can check this cable to see if it's working. Also, what's really good about these is that, let's just say the cables broke, it had been pinched, uh, yeah, something, I don't know, yeah, I've had cables break, and it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting something here, but down here, you know, let's just say I'm not, you know? It's like, oh, okay, and then all of a sudden, I, I get it here again, down here, I don't get it. So, you know, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, there's a pinch right there, and the line is broke, replace the line. So it comes in handy for troubleshooting too. You're not sitting there all day guessing, going, well, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> also power strips. Um, we'll get to that here in just a second. We'll go to a rack and we'll show you some of that because I, I, have, I have been in uh, the back of racks before where you know, I thought, wow, the, the, the power's on. I see other equipment working, but maybe it's just uh, one outlet, one of those outlets doesn't have a good connection because at the back of those power strips, those long power strips, they're just in there and they're, they're kind of just pressed in there. Remember the lights that used to, the string of lights that you'd put up with just two wires and you'd stick it in the light and then this other part turn and twist it down on it and it basically pierced the, the wire. Sort of the same thing that happens on those power strips in the racks and sometimes they'll lose connectivity and you don't, you know, that outlet's not working. So this is a good way to check things just like that. All right, let's go around. Let's show you how this thing works. All right, before we test this outlet, I want to uh, point out something on this fluke that I thought was uh, pretty nice, pretty, pretty nifty. The tip of it here, a lot of the testers will just have a nub or a rounded end, something like that on here. Well, they went the extra mile and made it to where it, it basically mimics a plug. So, you know, a plug that you would plug in. And that comes in real handy because uh, you can stick it in the outlet and know that you've got a good connection and you're testing it to the fullest, which is uh, really nice. Now on your outlets itself here in the US, you're gonna see a, a, a kind of a, a elongated one here and you're gonna see a short one here. On the left side, the long one is always gonna be your neutral. If you ever test this and it's not, uh, there's a there's a good chance that somebody has wired this wrong. So you plug it in, make sure there's no power on that side. Now on the right side, immediately I've got power. Yeah, same thing down here. Got power, no power. 
Now on some of the modern new switches that uh, you have maybe in your house or your business will be the plastic switches just like this here. And the, th they are the quiet switches by the way. And the problem with these are is the wiring is usually towards the back and with the plastic in there, it doesn't give you the indication that there's any power here at all, no matter where you check, it doesn't. Now, the old ceramic ones were a little bit different and the wiring was up closer and they will go off every time. In fact, I'll show you one of those. Now, if you have one of the older switches, it will read pretty quick with these. Yeah, see that? They work pretty well on these. This is actually a new switch, but it's, it's the, <laughs> the clunky ones and the wiring is a little bit different on the inside so it's going to give you uh, a nice reading without taking the face plate off again you're always going to want to take the face plate off anyway because if you were working on this you're going to want to take that off anyhow alrighty before we go into this panel here you're probably going to hear me say this a couple of times just because uh, that's how serious electrical is just because you can go to home depot or anything and get testing tools and tools to do electrical that doesn't make you an electrician okay so if you're afraid of anything in here um you know my daddy used to say all the time when i was growing up and he was an electrician so he taught me everything that i know and you know he always used to to drive that home all the time you must respect electricity or you will get killed it's just as simple as that so if you're not sure please uh, call an electrician, somebody that knows what they're doing. Don't do it just because you can do it. That's where we, that's, <laughs> that's, that's where we go wrong every single time. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, you might have a panel that's old like this one. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of an old panel probably. I don't know, it could be from the 50s or 60s, not sure, uh, but still in good shape. Uh, you know, it's never been overheated. That's how you can tell a panel because, you know, that's overheated because the wires will be real brittle. That's because they've had a lot of current and, you know, a lot of, um, uh, or it's been in like a garage or somewhere where it's, it's just naturally hot. So there's, there's a, several ways that, uh, that a good indication that the panel's no good anymore, but this one's in good shape here. So we're okay. Um, but as we turn on our little tester here, we can see that uh, no matter really where we put it, we're gonna get voltage because everything is turned on in this panel. This bottom breaker down here, we're gonna use this one as uh, just kind of a uh, little tool here. All right, we see that bottom wire coming off of this breaker here. I put it on there. If I turn the breaker off, yes, it is completely off. I know on the other end, it's gonna be off when I check it. And if it's not, then I got the wrong breaker and I need to <laughs> go back and find it. But as you can see, turn it back on. There we go. It's back on again. Turn it off. It's off. The rest of them, again, they're there. Even here on the bus bar inside, I mean, look at that. I'm not even, <laughs> I'm not even, I'm about an inch and a half, two inches away from the bus bar. And it's, it's already, it's already squealing there. So there's, there's power there. And of course, your uh, both lines, both of your hots up here, I've got voltage. You're not going to have any voltage down on your neutral lines. You better not. <laughs> uh, none of your grounds. You're not going to have anything like that. But all of the wires coming off of each breaker, if the breaker is on, yeah, you're going to have uh, you're going to have power. Oh, this one's still off. There we go. Now it's back on. All right, this is the part of the video that you're probably tuned in, especially if you're a data person, audio, video, yeah, a rack. We like to see racks with equipment in the back. Uh, yeah, we like to see all of that. Um, one thing that I have found over the years that just because you have a power strip in your rack like this one here, there's about 20 outlets here, so that all the outlets, you, you think they're all gonna work, but sometimes one will go out to where uh, you got power everywhere else, but this guy right here, mm, not so much. And uh, he needs a little help. And it's, it's, it's the same as I was telling you earlier. Uh, remember the old lights, the string along lights, especially in construction where it's just bare wires and the, the light socket itself goes on those bare wires. And then you got a little cap that you screw down and it pierces the wires on the uh, light itself, the socket itself. Works the same way. But some of the cheaper ones, like those, 
Amazon Basics or, or things like that where you, you go, wow, I, I got it for $25. Yeah, you did. Uh, I wouldn't depend on it, but yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, these right here, this was, uh, this was a trip light. And yeah, this one's about $80, but golly, for, you know, it's 20, 25 outlets. I'm not sure exactly, but it has quite a bit. And it just, you know, it, it just works. And I know it's going to, the hardware inside, much better than those cheesier ones. So invest a little bit more and yeah, you won't be <laughs> disappointed because again, I, I had one of these racks and I had one of those cheesy ones in there. And one of them went, in fact, the equipment went down and I, I couldn't figure out for the life of me what, you know, what's going on here it, because I just wasn't thinking, you know, at the time I wasn't thinking, but if I had one of these, let's turn this on. If I had one of these, I would have known real quick if I have, you know, power coming out of the outlet itself. See the power cord? You know, I'd have, yeah, I'd have power. Now here, I would have discovered real quick that I didn't have anything. Let's see, let's get over here. Okay, there, with, that's our neutral, so we don't have anything there. These are tight too. Uh, the trip lights. The sockets are real tight so your plugs don't fall out. That's the, that's the good thing. You might think, wow, it's, you're, you're having a hard time, aren't you? Yeah, but that's good. I, I want it to be tight like that. But there you go. You know it works. The neutral, not going to work. But again, I've had these fail. If I had one of these, I'd have spent less time. Okay, this one we're going to have to get down here on the floor because it's located about 12 inches from the floor itself. But uh, this is a trip light. That's, uh, and, and the reason I put this in really all of my data racks, I, I just like convenience outlets. I like to be able to know that I can plug something in, test equipment, maybe another switch, something like that. And I just want to know that I have a convenience outlet at every location so I don't have to hunt around, run an extension cord, do anything like that. Here it is. It's plugged in the house power usually. So... It works out really good for me, but uh, same thing. There you go. Got power. Shouldn't have power there. You're always going to have power on the right side of the plug. When I say the right side, um, your ground is at the bottom and it's on the right side. Okay, some people put these, I consider upside down when the ground is on top. Some will say that's the right way. Um, I guess I was just brought up in a different neighborhood. I don't know. <laughs> This needs to be at the bottom. Now on this particular one here, they're just sideways and that's okay, that's okay. But still, from the reference of ground here in North America uh, to the right side is always gonna be your hot and that's always gonna be your neutral. Nothing, got power. Nothing, got power. Yeah, power, power. Yeah, I know they're all gonna work. And uh, yeah, okay. I've tested my outlets. All right, I'll be sure to put all the things in the description below so that you can check those out. Maybe you could uh, put to use some of those things. Hey, also, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. It's the only way we're going to grow with your support. And we would appreciate that so, so very much. And one more time, if you're doing any sort of electrical work, make sure that... Uh, that you're confident in doing that and make sure if you're not <laughs> get you an electrician get somebody that knows what they're doing so that you uh, will come out alive <laughs> hold your cards we may have a bingo there you go evergreen five three six seven nine i think we have a winner of the oldest panel